I went down a dark path on the deep web, just curious about a creepy video. Now, a monstrous figure with a cleaver is hunting me down. This terrifying encounter will leave you questioning reality. Was it a snuff film, or did I unleash a horror from another dimension? Click to read the chilling story of my desperate fight for survival. Hit subscribe and ring that notification bell to stay tuned for the next terrifying chapter. The flickering laptop screen cast an unsettling glow on my face as I navigated the murky depths of the deep web. A warning I'd read flashed in my mind, Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. It felt melodramatic at the time, but now, sweat clung to my palms like cheap glue. It all started innocently, a research project for a history class on the Black Plague. One Google search led to another, a click on a forum post about medieval torture methods sending me spiraling down a rabbit hole. Then, a whisper of a hidden video, a snuff film of sorts, surfaced. Curiosity, morbid and irresistible, gnawed at me, following a series of complex steps involving proxy servers and encryption software, I landed on a dark, text-heavy page. It felt like being in a forgotten library, the air thick with dust and unspoken secrets. A single grainy video thumbnail glared at me, a dilapidated cabin bathed in moonlight, with the chilling caption, The Harbinger. Clicking on it felt like crossing a threshold. The video sputtered to life, the silence punctuated by the hiss of static. A lone figure, impossibly gaunt, approached the cabin. My breath hitched as the figure raised a rusty cleaver, the moonlight glinting off the metal. A horrifying scream ripped through the silence, then nothing. Just static, the cold dread settled in my chest. Was it real? My stomach twisted as I scrolled down, my eyes catching a single sentence embedded in the comments. The ritual begins at the Harbinger's call, panic clawed at me. Closing the laptop, I shoved it into my backpack and scrambled to my feet. My room suddenly felt suffocating, the silence amplifying the pounding of my heart. I had to get out, the wind howled like a banshee as I sprinted through the deserted park, the distant streetlights casting long, skeletal shadows. Every rustle of leaves, every creak of a branch, sent shivers down my spine. Just as my lungs burned, a guttural growl echoed through the night. I froze, terror choking the scream that rose in my throat. A dark shape lumbered out of the darkness, moonlight glinting off a raised cleaver, pure instinct propelled me forward. I ran blindly, weaving through trees, my breath raspy and shallow. My legs felt like lead, and the darkness seemed to swallow me whole. The growl came again, closer this time, then, a glimmer of hope. A rickety wooden bridge stretched across a rushing stream, a narrow path to the other side. With a burst of adrenaline, I scrambled onto it. The bridge groaned in protest, threatening to give way under my weight, reaching the other side, I didn't dare look back. My lungs were on fire, my legs threatening to collapse. I stumbled deeper into the woods, pushing through tangled undergrowth, thorns tearing at my clothes. Suddenly, the air grew still. The pursuing growl was gone. But a different sound filled the air, a deep, rhythmic chanting. It seemed to pulse through the trees, malevolent and heavy, fear turned to a strange calm. This wasn't a random attack. The video, the ritual, they were all connected. I had stumbled upon something sinister, and now, it was hunting me, I stumbled upon a clearing, a small cabin nestled amongst the trees. Light flickered from a single window. Hope, fragile but persistent, bloomed in my chest, creeping towards the cabin, I cautiously peeked through the window. An old woman sat by a crackling fire, muttering incantations in an unknown tongue. On the floor beside her lay a pile of dusty books, their leather covers embossed with cryptic symbols. This was no ordinary woman. She was the gatekeeper, the one orchestrating the horror. Taking a deep breath, I burst through the rickety door. The woman spun around, her eyes wide with surprise. 
The chanting ceased, replaced by an astonished silence. Before she could react, I snatched the video clip from my pocket and flung it into the fire. It flared for a moment, then dissolved into ash. The woman's face contorted in rage. She screeched, unleashing a torrent of incomprehensible curses. The cabin floor trembled and the room seemed to grow colder, but it was too late. The ritual was broken. The chanting outside faltered, then died. A low, frustrated moan echoed through the forest. The harbinger's grip on reality loosened, the woman lunged at me, but I dodged her, rolling across the dusty floor. My hand grasped a heavy book, its pages filled with strange symbols. With a desperate scream, I slammed it against her head.